Hi everybody, I'm Callan Bentley and I uh, teach at Piedmont Virginia Community College in Charlottesville, Virginia. And we're a little bit southwest of Charlottesville now. We're in the Blue Ridge Mountains in, uh, on a trail just off the Blue Ridge Parkway. And we're hiking to a place called White Rock Falls. But as we started hiking, we found a really nice outcrop of rock here. And it, uh, it shows some really neat features. So if you look down here at the very bottom, you'll see sort of a pebbly texture. So there's uh, large grains of sand and small pebbles here in a layer that goes like this. And then the grain size decreases and we have some sand. And then above that, we've got a big body of mud that's about this thick. And this mud body is really distinctive because it's got this flakiness that runs through it like that. All right, that flakiness is actually a um, later metamorphic overprint on the original sedimentary layers. It's what we call a cleavage. The rock is cleaving in this direction. All right, and then above that, we've got another kind of wavy surface here, and then we go back into the pebbly material again. And you can actually see the pebbles standing out in high relief right here. So they've got a nice texture to them. Okay, great. Um, so this represents fluctuating energy levels of the water that deposit these sediment, sediments. Um, the stuff down at the bottom that was very coarse grain, made out of coarse sand and pebbles, that represents high energy deposition. Then the muddy interval in the middle represents a time of low energy deposition. And then the coarse material up top represents a return to high energy deposition. So we can actually see sort of the waxing and waning of the strength of water currents um, that occurred at this spot. Now today, this is in the mountains of Virginia, but when these layers were deposited, this was uh, the shoreline of North America. So during the Cambrian period of geologic time, there was um, tectonic quiet and the land was subsiding and sea level was rising. And we have these ancient beach and nearshore marine deposits that mark that um, sea level rise onto the continent. It's what we call a transgressive sequence. Overall, it's called the Chilhawi group. That's the proper name for this package of sediments. And the Chilhawi group from bottom to top consists of the Weaverton Formation, the Harpers Formation, and the Antietam Formation. The Weaverton Formation consists of sand and gravel at the bottom. The Harpers Formation is mainly mud in the middle. And then the Antietam Formation is a nice pure quartz sand up at the top, uh, shot through with scolithos worm burrows. Um, so this actually kind of mimics that on a smaller scale where we're basically going from sand to mud to sand again. Um, but you know, that's, that's a, a, also the pattern we see on a much larger scale with this big thick um, sequence of sedimentary layers. Then they, they all got squeezed during Appalachian mountain building. That's where this tectonic cleavage comes from. You can see it's much better developed in the mud layer because that's full of the little flaky minerals called clays that basically um, have a, a shape kind of like a dinner plate or a piece of paper. And those minerals are absent in the sandy layers. These are dominated by the mineral quartz, which uh, tends to form grains that are more or less, you know, equant in every direction. They're the same thickness in every direction. Um, so this one doesn't cleave as well. Um, and um, so we're looking at evidence here of a time of tectonic quiet, but then it's overprinted by this tectonic violence that has squeezed it and imparted this cleavage to the layers that are susceptible to getting cleavage. So we've got sandy layers down here where we've got these large grains and we can see some pebbles there. And then as we go up, we get into this layer here that is really strongly cleaved. So the bedding is like this, and then the cleavage is like that. All right, here we have uh, an outcrop of some of the same quartz sandstone, but it has gotten stressed out and it's got the scars to prove it. So you can see these parallel little white lines here. These are tension gashes. They're a kind of vein and basically what it represents is a spot where the rock ripped open and then that rip was sealed shut with a deposit of hydrothermal quartz, which we also call milky quartz. So breaks in the rock are not especially uncommon, but breaks that look like this that are so short, you know, these veins are not through going features. They're just little like stretch marks in the rock. That is evidence that this rock was deforming somewhere in the brittle ductile transition which is to say not very shallow in Earth's crust, but not super deep either. The rock is breaking, but it's breaking and flexing at the same time. And uh, so these are little tectonic scars probably related to the stresses of Appalachian mountain building.
All right, we're almost at White Rock Falls and we've gotten to this nice cliffside outcrop. And you can see here a couple of the features that we were um, looking at earlier in that kind of crummy outcrop by the little creek. We've got sedimentary bedding, which here is almost horizontal, sort of gently dipping. And then we've got tectonic cleavage also developed, but the tectonic cleavage is, is much steeper. So that's this feature that cuts across these muddier layers. So it's not very well expressed in the sandy layers here or here, but wherever there's mud, you end up getting that cleavage as well. All right, so we've made it to White Rock Falls and I'm crossing the little creek here. And um, I want to call your attention to a few features you can see on the wall above me here. So um, the first is sedimentary bedding. So bedding here is kind of going like this uh, across the outcrop. And then there's also, in some layers, some tectonic cleavage, although it doesn't show up super well right here. But what does show up really well is a change in the orientation of the bedding right above my head. So you can see in this direction, to your right, the beds dip towards me, and then they kind of scoop up going in this direction and dip towards me um, on your left. So basically here we have something that looks kind of like a smiley face if we look at it on the largest scale. And there's a couple of possibilities for what this is. One possibility is that this is a fold, a fold that goes down in the middle, which we would call a syncline. And another possibility is that this is a giant scour that a really high energy current scoured into previous sediments, creating a, a sort of swale on the seafloor and then filled that in with more sediment. And you can actually distinguish between these two competing hypotheses here by looking at a couple of features. One is that the layer underneath, which is only a couple of meters thick, wraps around and doesn't change its thickness as it goes uh, across this um, um, smiley face shaped feature. And that's strong evidence that this is a syncline, that those layers have been folded, all right? And then in the layers above my head, uh, you just basically don't have the layering where you can see that fold as nicely. But another thing catches my eye, and it's these white stripes that you can see in an almost vertical orientation in several places here. These appear to be more of these quartz veins that show stretching of the sandstone on the outer part of the fold arc. So if you imagine like taking a pencil and bending that pencil, it's gonna to start to snap on the outside of the bend. That's where the breaks will form. And so oftentimes on the uh, hinge area of a fold, we'll often see these stress fractures that show extension there on the, the outer part of the fold. So I think this is a syncline, all right? And that syncline was not originally present when these sediments were deposited. It was imparted later due to the stresses of Appalachian mountain building. Essentially, Africa pushed on these strata from the east and North America pushed back on these strata from the west and that caused them to buckle, just like somebody sliding onto a, a carpet in a, a hallway. All right, next up, let's go and take a look at the falls themselves and see what we can see there. All right, so here is White Rock Falls in all of its glory. Um, I am notoriously a curmudgeon when it comes to waterfalls um, because they don't really excite me. It's just, you know, water flowing downhill under the influence of gravity and that's not all that interesting. And to boot, this one basically just doesn't even have that much water right now. It's been a dry season, so there's very little water running through it. And uh, I think you can ignore the waterfall. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn my back on it. All right. But one of the things that's really neat right here is you can see that sedimentary layering sweep across the area of the, the falls. And camera person, you might pan along those layers there and, and show that. And um, right down here below um, where Christina and I are standing, you can see these vertical um, cracks going down in this direction. That is more of that tectonic cleavage. But this is not one of those mud layers. This one is actually a sand layer. So in sandstones, cleavage tends to be more widely spaced than uh, the very tightly spaced cleavage we saw in the mud rocks. This is a pothole. And a pothole is an erosional feature that develops in a stream of flowing water where the water makes a little tornado shape. We call it a vortex. And that vortex basically spins suspended sand and silt around in one spot, and it essentially drills into the rock. So where Vinny the dog is down here, you can see there's two more potholes right at river water level. Um, 
I don't know if you can see those through the dog. It's not a transparent dog. Um, but yeah, right there at the water level, you can see a couple more of these uh, lines of evidence, these signatures of faster flowing water at different points in the past. So this pothole here records the swirling motion of water during a time of very active water flow. And that suspended sediment in the water drills a little uh, hole in the rock. Right, it's basically a focused form of abrasion. All right, so we're down here at the base of the falls. Here's the falls coming down here. Here's a nice look at those potholes that we were just talking about. And then in this boulder right here, next to my uh, sneaker, which you can see there to give you a sense of scale, we've got another couple sets of these beautiful tension gashes. And they make sort of a, uh, a pattern of, oh, there's Vinny, um, of uh, scars going through this uh, quartz sandstone, little white stripes. Vinny is very curious about them. All right, what do you think, Vinny? Is that enough? 